Okay. Melanie, it's so good to have you here to talk with us about becoming Veron because everybody watching out there have all decided that you are Veron. So you did so, so well. But firstly, I just want to ask, would you like a cup of tea? I'd love a cup of tea. Thank you. Provided it's all right. This, this is just milk. <laughs> One can never be too sure. That's perfect. Thank you. Well, it was great fun being there, and so thank you for that. That people, I'm glad people liked it, and it lived up to their expectations of what Verin might look like and might do. It truly did. And I've got a clipboard down here that I'm able to see from here. But the first thing that I want to ask you before we talk um, about Verin is how long you've actually known me for ah well katrina i was casting my mind back i think you and i probably met in the late 90s um we were both involved in uh, teaching or managing adult learning classes and you were teaching a lot of it classes in those days and then there were special projects that were running to do with helping vocational teachers use very new technology which was coming out um, all sorts of exciting ways of communicating with students, creating online spaces, using new technology for different forms of assessment and all those things. And you and I were both very enthusiastic about that. And uh, we did a number of projects together, I remember, that were a lot of fun. And uh, yes, it was. And this was all before even we had broadband in Australia. So we were very brave doing it on ADSL, <laughs> I think, in those days. But we had a a lot of interest around the state for New South Wales. And it was interesting that about 10 years after that, I actually started working in a statewide role to do with e-learning and we worked together again there. So it's been quite a while, quite a long journey. We know each other well. It was a really fun journey because we got to go to lots of cons, didn't we? We did, <laughs> we did. And I had the extra fun of organizing some of those. So that was an extra degree of difficulty. That's but I, right, you did too. <laughs> but I had a great team uh, who kept me on track. But yes, and I could always count on Katrina with coming up with something very innovative and interesting and useful to, to the people who were at the conference to take away and, and use in their own work. And uh, I think a, a lot of those projects laid the foundation for a lot of online learning, which of course was so useful recently during COVID. Um, yeah. You know, the, the colleges that had been involved in that were already there, ready to step up and, and go online and, and knew how to do it properly. Now, I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. And the answer you would have given yesterday <laughs> is different to the answer that you're going to give today. That's true. Have you read The Wheel of Time? Well, the answer yesterday was no. I have not read The Wheel of Time, despite... Uh, being involved in, in Varian and finding it fascinating and a highly complex um, and interesting world just in the little bit that I did but um, no but I decided that before we were doing the interview I better have a quick look and started reading the first book the prologue and a few pages the so, prologue and a few pages so do you remember what was happening when you stopped reading well there was a father and son Tam, I think, was one, the father, and they were going down to a village for the spring festival. And the women folk were busy putting up the maypole and airing all the bed linen out the windows, and there was a mysterious stranger following them on the road. So it's very intriguing. That's a memory. <laughs> What's really funny is when um, Mel arrived, she said something to me about something I could do with my braid. And I said to her, oh no, it needs to hang like this because it's a good two rivers braid. And Mel knew what I was talking about. And I was like, but you haven't read the books. <laughs> and that's when she snuck in and told me that she started this morning. But the next question I've got for you is, before we ever even I even gave you any information about mm. Verin, how many times did I ask you, are you sure you'll never <laughs> read The Wheel of Time? 
I remember looking at it and how many books there were and the thickness of the books and thinking, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to sit through those. And it's not, it's not my usual for choice of book, but it just so happens I've got a lot more time on my hands. And so I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll give it a try. See how and you are a voracious reader. I do. I do read a lot. Yeah. But I did ask Mel over and over <laughs> because I didn't want to spoil her. <sighs> but we have, we have agreed that Mel is just going to, every time Varen comes up in the book, Mel's just going to be like, that's me. <laughs> and the spoiling is going to be worth it. Yeah. So Mel, have you ever dressed up? before or done any kind of acting yes yes um probably years ago um at uni and then life intervened and i got back into community theater in about 2013 with a role in calendar girls mind you i was the women's institute president who did not need to remove any items of clothing at all so that was good but since then i've gone on to have a role as mrs briggs in um, mary poppins um, the mother, Marion Wollstone from um, The Boy from Oz, and the latest one, which I, I love, was um, Madame Morrible from Wicked. It was a great, great uh, role. And I came and saw that production, mm. and Mel made the most amazing Madame Horrible, <laughs> let me tell you. And there's a few photos of that to have a look at while we're talking. Yeah, lots of fun. So what did you do in order to prepare yourself to become Varen? Well, you'd written a great synopsis of the, the scene. So I knew what was required. I knew that this was um, a final scene for Varen in the book. So it had to be, it had to reflect her wisdom, her maturity, her cunning, her ingenuity and it also had to reflect a certain finality and a, and a sadness uh, but a resignation and, and an acceptance of, of what she was doing. That was how I, I sort of thought about it from the approaching the character point of view and then on the physical side it was a matter of you and I working out what an appropriate costume would be. Because I sent you some um, fan art. You did because we still didn't even get that Varen confirmation today. So we all know in our head canon what Varen looks like, but we're still waiting to see what Amazon says Varen will look like. And we really wish that Amazon had met you. So do I. Before they did the filming. <laughs> because, so <do> I. <laughs> because your Varen is, is just so so perfect it really felt like you nailed the essence mm. of her character oh. right down to the little mutterings and mumblings <laughs> thank you she seems an intriguing character she is indeed you could say she's a bit of a fan favorite well that's that's interesting i mean i think she given the role that you discover that she's occupied, I can understand that. She's obviously a very portrayed as a very smart and dedicated woman with with several sides to her character, shall we say. Yes, mm. yes. So how did you get Varen's hair so perfect? <laughs> well, I can thank Belle and the players from uh, their wardrobe department. Um, I borrowed a wig from them and then we proceeded to try and age her a little bit as appropriate for the time of her life that she was at um, with just a judicious application of baby powder. It's an old theatre trick. If you want to make your hair go grey, baby powder is the way to go. I have to say now I truly wish I had filmed the <laughs> shenanigans in my bathroom getting that baby powder just right. It had to be just right. I, I imagined her not necessarily grey all over, just having streaks of grey, sort of quite dramatic through. So that's that's wings of grey. <laughs> wings of grey. Yeah. So for you, was it fun filming? Oh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And, and I haven't done much filming. Most of the, the acting work I've done has been on stage. But um, 
you very quickly realize that it's tricky when you have to stop and redo something to make it smooth to make it uh, consistent to get that continuity you have to do it the same way exactly each time and that's a challenge for a stage actor let me tell you because you used to sort of doing it differently each time but it was a lot of fun um, getting the lip syncing right was a lot of fun <laughs> Um, I loved the song. I thought the song was really, really great. And some of the lines such as, you know, and by the way, that dress you're wearing is green. Um, I, I thought were very clever and livened it up a bit. Livened up the, the scene. It was lots of fun. And I, I keep getting these visions of we're not going to give any hint to Mel what, which book that line comes in. But when Mel gets to that line and reads it, she's going to jump out of her chair <laughs> and go, oh, my God, because we only see a bit of it in the song, you yeah. know, and it's just going to be amazing when you see how that comes together and why that is such an iconic line yeah. that she says. So that's that's going to be, to be really funny. To there could be many, many pages, I think, between now and then, I have a feeling. Mel doesn't even know which book Varen makes her entrance in. So it, it means that there is still lots for you to discover. I think this was all a plot to ensure that I would read the books. She thinks I don't see through this, but I do. I do see through this. <laughs> and she doesn't realise you would not give the Varen story to someone. <laughs> If you thought they were about to start reading the books. <laughs> so if it's a plot, then I must be a dark friend. Oh, now she's lost me completely. No, I'll have to get back to those books. And my last question I can't even ask because my last question was, are you sure that you still won't read what? So I think what I would change that to be asking is, do you think you're going to get through all of it? Well, no pressure. I'll give We're it a try. We're getting it on film. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, I wonder if anybody watching would be interested to see any highlights of discussions with Mel as she's reading. Would oh, you yeah. be interested in yeah. chatting to me every now and then? Like, I mean, not, yeah. you know, not a weekly podcast. I think that is asking too much of both of us. Mm. But maybe we could get together every now and then and just have a bit of a chat about what you're reading. Yes, and I can see from just the few pages I've read already, I, that would be really welcome because there's a lot to unpack. It's not a quick read by any means. Not if you're going to do it properly. It's got to really there's, piecing there's, it all together. There's two ways. Some people kind of race through and do a quick read. Mm. And then go back to the beginning and do a, a slow read, you know, mm. um, because we do have a saying, which is, what do you do when you finish reading The Wheel of Time? <laughs> you go back to the beginning and you read The Wheel of Time over again. I'm beginning to understand this. <laughs> now, this is, all she's done is gotten off the road and into the village. So she's literally walked down the quarry road and into the village and she can already see that. I think we are able to actually say, welcome to the fandom, Mel. Oh, wow, that's an honor. That's big, thank you, thank you all, thank you. <laughs> and thank you for being such a perfect Varen. I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that fun time too. Cheers, cheers. And, and yeah, that's where, because I'm not using any sound that we do. Did you put the poison in the pot? No, not yet. No, because that's, that's the first scene. But what you're going to need to do is be sitting turned partly towards me because what I'm getting is kind of your back and your yes. arm. And I think that to start with, as you pour the poison into the pot, I might actually be a bit more zoomed in. Now, if you can stop, 
Is it possible well, for you hand? to do that again with the other hand? Yeah. <laughs> okay, take it from the top. Exactly. Because I forgot to have it Exactly. So, if you can start again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only and two. action. <laughs> okay, so this goes back in here. This goes back on there. Right. Mm hmm Yeah, because remember a bit later you're going to double check that every drop is gone. So just stop for a moment for me. Because, and put the cup back down because I'm just going to slightly change how I've got the camera. Yep, and just do the picking the cup up and taking a sip again. Oh, and do a little bit of mumbling and slight head shaking as you take some sips. <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter for it to fit into the timing of the song, if you mm. know what I mean, because I'll choose the best bits and okay. fit them in. Oh yeah, just about. Yeah, because, because right. she would have emptied it into the pot to then sit and drink the pot. So now, now you can pour some more, um, so that because we can, of course, empty the pot at some point. Yes. And then you can put the cup down and just kind of um, like turn the teapot a little bit. You know, do that little OCD, putting things in the right position. And shake your head, pour a bit more. Maybe if we pour, <laughs> maybe if we pour everything into this, because I, I think we've got enough of, mm -hmm. the, of that bit, like yeah. pour all the teapot. So that's why I'm thinking we're probably close enough now to empty the teapot. I made way too much tea. Sorry, I zoomed out a bit too much. Can you just put the cup back to your mouth and just put it down in the saucer? <laughs> That's good. So what we could try and do now is maybe the, the disappearing, reappearing book thing. So and so do you'll this? do it on the bed. If I bring it, bring it over so that you can get your hands in position to begin the untwisting and pick the little book up. Now, let me just look at what I said here is that, yeah, you'd open it and that's your ink pot there. Ah. Oh much yeah and you see if you rub your finger on that's just pencil yep and now pick your feather up and write in the book a little bit and did it work did it work this one there? I can't yeah, this see it. and of course um, so now, hang on, what happens. get another one. Okay. Yep. This time, do it on the side that the camera is looking at. Right. Okay. And maybe, so you know, mm. But that's the motion you want. It is. Yeah. So most of it's in that corner so that you don't get the shavings of the pencil itself. Oh, that's what we want. <laughs> that is so good. That was so bare in the way you did that. Alright. No. Nah. Nah. <laughs> and then let go, but not moving. Oh, I'm pretty sure I was not in that view. So I might have to just check back on those mm -hmm. bits. Yeah. Oh no. I'm going to have to do that one again. I was zoomed in, we can't see your hands. on the ball right <laughs> now do you want me to play that, that so fun. that you get yeah. to actually lip sync it mm -hmm. okay so 
Um, oh no. It wasn't filming? It's filming, but it was still zoomed in. I did wonder, I was going to ask you, and I thought, oh no, she fixed that, but no. Nope. That's right. We'll I again. did not. So that means all the lip syncing. <sighs> and you had it all. Uh, so let's give you back your chair. <laughs> And I think you were sitting a little bit closer because it's just the window oh, more on oh, you. I, have, I shouldn't have the mark here yet, should I? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, ah, no. that'll be all right because we can't put it back on. Like, do you know what I mean? If we, no, <laughs> do you know what? Yeah. Honestly, people don't notice things okay. like well I know one person who does The battery. So spent. You basically know now what you're going to do. Mm. So I would suggest just do it because then we'll see how that flows and, and whether we might change how to do it. Yeah. It would be good if you die towards the camera, not away from it. That was actually pretty perfect dying. Okay. Action. Action. <laughs>